Good morning, my name is Reverend Caroline Keatley, Vicar of St Mark's Colney Heath, and I would like to welcome you to Digital Sundays. Hello, <laughs> Alex and Sarah here. Uh, hope everyone is doing okay. We've recorded this video because we've got some exciting news to share with you all in that we're having a baby in, not now, in September. So on the 12th of September, apparently, <laughs> is when the baby is coming. <laughs> Come on, it's your bit now. <laughs> Amateur. Never sounded less sure of anything in your life. <laughs> yes, we, we wouldn't uh, usually tell you, um, well, we weren't originally planning to tell you over open mic because we're not very good at them. Um, <laughs> but I, um, yeah, we thought it'd be nice to share some happy news, particularly at this time. And also, it's occurred to us that I'm going to be quite a different shape by the time I see you all again. And we didn't want your first reaction on us walking back into the church to be, oh, that's who stockpiled all of the pasta. So, yeah, we're really excited. Um, we're sad not to be able to share this with you in person, but we hope this brings a little bit of happiness to your day. See you soon. Bye bye. bye. Don't wave. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Digital Sunday number three. It's a particular special Sunday for us today because it's Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday is where we remember Jesus coming into Jerusalem on a donkey. And people sing praises to him, Hosanna, the King of Kings is coming. And this is all in the week of Jesus' life leading up to the cross and resurrection. Which of course is what Holy Week is all about. It's remembering that particular time in Jesus' life. I know that Holy Week this week will be different for us all because we're normally together, but we are close to Jesus in this time and we can still turn it into a really valuable, holy and worshipful moment. Take some time to think about how you want to spend this week, whether you want to add in some extra prayer time, extra bit of worship, or whether you want to read the last bit of a gospel to really think about what happened in that week leading up to Jesus' cross and resurrection. And this week we will have Monday, Thursday services, Good Friday and Easter Sunday coming up. But for now, we're going to continue in worship today. We've got a great message from Mike Palin coming. So let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you that we can connect with one another because we are connected to you. And we pray that as we praise you this morning, that you would bless us in our homes, that you would refresh us in your Holy Spirit, that you would strengthen us in your truth and that we would worship you together wherever we are this morning. Amen.
in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen it is really good to be able to worship together. And Mike Palin has prepared a, for a Bible reflection on Ezekiel, thinking about dry bones and thinking about the hope that we have during these times. So do enjoy the message that he has for us today. Hello. Our reading today is taken from Ezekiel, chapter 37, reading from verse 4 to 10. Ezekiel 37 verses 4 to 10. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life then you will know that I am the Lord. 
So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, um, welcome to our garden. Um, this is uh, a bit clearer. It was a bit rainy earlier. Um, I hope you're well. Um, let me just pray. Dear God, thank you uh, for the chance to be together, even though it's in a slightly different way. Thank you that you are fully present and as big and powerful and loving as ever. Um, would you just be with us in this time and teach us something about you to sustain us and carry us uh, in this time. Amen. Now I uh, I don't know whether you noticed, I've noticed that there's less and less phone boxes around and one of the things that's replaced phone boxes it seems, I don't know whether a, as a direct swap, is those defibrillators. You know you get these boxes on the wall now and I always had this idea that I'd love to do that defibrillator. I think it's my time of watching sort of medical dramas, you know the whole where they rub the paddles and then go clear! Um, I always imagine that'd be quite a fun thing to do because I thought you were bringing someone back to life when actually you're not. You're almost resetting the rhythm of the heart, which uh, is less fun, but I'd still quite like to do it. And I was thinking about uh, this passage in Ezekiel that we've just had read about these, these dry bones. And I've been thinking about the idea of coming alive, you know, and so we get this conversation between Ezekiel and God. And I think it's about the people of God coming alive or almost having their rhythm reset restarted because the people of God had lost their way again they'd uh, they were just not where God wanted them to be and he almost had to say look uh, let me show you something and it was almost like a bit of a shock and I, I think this sort of current climate which I have to say I'm really struggling with um, I think it's an opportunity for us as Christians because I wonder whether normally Christians just exist just below the surface. I mean, there's a few crazy people that sit above the power pit, you know, the sort of slightly over-the-top Christians that we love and we, we sort of follow and get inspired by. But maybe most of us, we just hover. So we're not hiding our faith, but maybe we're not shouting about it as well. And I wonder whether in this time, the challenge for us in this insane time is, is to come alive, is to be the Christians that uh, we know God wants us to be, to be known, to be visible, to be utterly loving and actually exist above the surface. So when the world is dealing with all this madness that we can show uh, hope and we can show care and we can show generosity, um, you know, for those people that, that are struggling, you know, how do we build bridges into communities when we can't meet? Uh, actually, we're, we're doing that. You know, Christians are being really creative. You know, the online stuff's really good. We can, we can ring someone up. Maybe we don't because we see them all the time. But actually, a phone call is really powerful. Maybe we could write. You know, dropping a, a card through people's doors is, is I mean, it's so powerful. We don't know. We get a handwritten letter. It's significant. It makes us feel really valued because someone's put time into that. Imagine writing handwritten letters to your whole street and saying, we're here for you. If you need to think, here's my number. Because I was thinking of the Good Samaritan and I think, what does the sort of idea of the Good Samaritan, this sort of radical love look like in this time? And I think this conversation between Ezekiel and God gives us uh, some real help because Ezekiel was encouraged to hear the word. He said, hear the word of the Lord. So what is God saying in this time? And I've been chatting to various people and I've wanted to know really, you know, in this time of confusion and uncertainty and something that most of us have never experienced, uh, what is God saying? And a lot of people are talking about the importance of uh, maybe breathing and pausing, the importance of community and people over things. 
Uh, maybe it's teaching us about Sabbath and our pace of life and our priorities. And actually, it's really important we hear and say, God, what are you saying in this? And that was Ezekiel said, God was saying, I need you to listen to me now because I've got something to say. And we believe God has got something to say. Then Ezekiel is encouraged to hear the command. And he's saying, actually, what is God calling us to do? And that's really personal and individual. Who is it that God's given you to pour into at this time? Boldness in this time is really key. And Christians have a certain boldness that comes from God. The Holy Spirit is our boldness. That conversation that Paul has with timid, uh, with Timothy to say, actually, you're not called to be timid. You're called to be bold. People need to step up. And then we get this great verse in uh verse 7 where Ezekiel says there was a noise a rattling and bones came together and I wonder whether at this time we should be looking around and saying what are the noises of God being on the move and when we hear those noises we say look God is on the move and we tell people about them because that is in essence our hope actually Ezekiel would be looking at those dry bones and thinking nothing can come of these and yet God says hang on a minute I've got something to say about this. And these bones come alive. And he's probably going, God is on the move. Because God's breath brings life. Actually, this, this situation has challenged us in all different ways. But we need to know that God breathes lives into situations. Uh, breathes life into situations that seemingly have no life. You know, the impossible happens in this story. The dead, detached, lifeless bodies come alive. And then what happens? They stand. They stand as an army. And actually what God is maybe teaching us is to, to behave in a way so that when the virus is gone, we don't revert to that behaviour, but that we don't fall back on the floor like a pile of bones, but that we stand on our feet like an army. And what's an army like? Well, it says they rise from inactivity, this army. They stand together. And so an army is united. An army has a purpose an army is trained. We need to spend time praying and reading God's word. Uh, an army is resourceful, and I've seen that in so many ways. The online church network is just mind-blowing. Uh, an army is courageous. They're willing to do things that are of courage. You know, they are bold. An army enters a battlefield, and an army fights. And we have a, a battlefield, and we have a fight on our hands. And I think there's no more better opportunity for Christians to stop existing either on the surface or just under it, but to stand firm because God's people are a force to be reckoned with. And I know God wants to breathe life into this, into this time when virus is taking life. He wants to breathe hope into this time where people are really struggling to see beyond the end of this. And so I think we want to be Christians uh, that, that live that and breathe that and so my challenge for myself and for each one of us is that we should come alive through the fire in 
darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God As we come to the closing of our service, we're gonna finish in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the time that we've been able to spend together. We pray that you would help us, sustain us, and strengthen us all this week. Help us to look to you, to have faith and comfort in you. Amen. Just to finish with a couple of notices, and really the first one is a comment. Uh, we know that many of you found this week a little bit harder than the first week, and just an encouragement to keep going, keep encouraging one another, keep the rhythms in, and keep looking to Jesus. The second notice is about the youth minister. As many of you know, for St Mark's, we've been advertising for a youth minister, and we did have interest, and we did have applications. However, what we're going to do during these times is we're moving the youth minister post until autumn, where we will review it all again with a look to post that then. Thirdly, digital Easter. Monday Thursday will take place uh, and we will have a website release the similar to the digital Sundays, which will take place at eight o'clock this Thursday. Then on Good Friday, there'll be a digital Good Friday release, which will take place at 9 a.m. And then we will have an Easter digital release, which will happen on Sunday. Really what it's gonna look like is three online services. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. Do email into the office if you need to find out more. It's great to be in contact. Keep going, keep strong, and good to be with you this morning. <laughs>